Pepper people, I get a lot of comments and questions about blood oxygen monitoring, SpO2 sensors and monitors, SpO2 wearables. And here's a couple I received recently. Variations of what SpO2 monitor do you recommend? Now, Pepper people, you, you know I love you. Um, but sometimes I have a lot of problems with you people. So what are we talking about here? Oh, excuse me, Charleston. Did you know that your hair looks like uh, a seabird? Lego man, shut up. Everyone knows that this is a thinly veiled Christian cat channel. Stewie, would you agree with these statements? Right. Friends, this is the well you oxygen sensor. It's a wearable, you wear it all night long, and it gives you a readout of your blood oxygen levels the entire night. Now these are not, I would say, the best made. They work for about a year, roughly, and then they just crap out on you. Oddly right when the warranty runs out. This is made by Viatom. Um, they, have, they have an app that goes along with it. It's actually, it's pretty decent. But let's talk about the use of O2 rings in general and monitoring, monitoring it all night. Now there is an application for them that I do like, but in general, I think they're the stupidest thing ever. And hear me out on this, please. When I think of wearables that measure your SpO2 levels throughout the night, I just personally think this is completely wasted effort, money and time on your part. It's a very, very good example to me of seeing the tree and not the forest. You have all this information at your disposal, yet the focus is on SpO2, which is really secondary to the problem that you're having while you're sleeping. Let me explain more. I'm gonna use blood pressure as an example for this. I was recently doing a PAP analysis with someone and we finally got him on some pressures that were really pretty good. I think we actually got him optimal on the first try. And the first thing he said is, like on our, fo our follow-up two weeks later is, wow, my blood pressure plummeted. In fact, he didn't tell me any of this during the first meeting. It was during the second meeting. He was like, I have this, this drug-resistant hypertension and all of a sudden the last two weeks while I did the different pressure settings with CPAP, it just dropped off. It's now normal. He gave me the values and it was, it was a normal value. And he said what they, what they were previously to that they were much, much higher. So yeah, it was a significant drop in his blood pressure. But here this whole time he's using his blood pressure monitor as something. He's, he's looking at his blood pressure readings throughout the day. He did it, said he does it several times a day. And really that information's cool and all, but it doesn't do anything. And so I look at these SpO2 wearables as the exact same thing. You're looking at something that doesn't matter. For 99% of you, it doesn't matter. You're looking at something that is it's wasting your time. Your focus is on something that just simply doesn't matter. I'm gonna show you an example of this right now. This is our example. First, let's marvel at the AHI at 0.47. You're gonna see that this is mildly a little bit of a train wreck. Lots of arousals throughout this one. But I'm gonna tell you here, I have not looked at the SpO2 data other than I know that there is SpO2 data in here that we can look at. So you might be saying, that's BS, Jason. Oh, excuse my Jocelyn, that is BS. I swear to you, I didn't look. What I would actually do if I was wrong is I, I just simply wouldn't upload this clip. <laughs> okay, so I'm not gonna look at it. And I can tell you right now, looking at this, Right between this point and this point, there's gonna to be tons of blood oxygen desaturations, okay? Let's play along at home. Basically 1120 to 1145. We're gonna see, this one's gonna be massive. This one right here is actually labeled as a hypopnea. Whenever you have these kind of wedges that wedge down and away, down into the right like that, this is a fat hypopnea. Don't even have to zoom in on it. Although I really want to right now. Massive hypopnea. Just mark my words. Right there at 1253. Huge hypopnea. Or huge blood oxygen desaturation. Don't even need a wearable. Over here between this time 2 and 216. We're going to have a big blood oxygen desaturation. And then we're going to have a bunch of chunky stuff between 340 and like 325-ish roughly. Throughout the rest of this, throughout all this stuff in here, we're gonna have low level, probably one to 2% desaturations, if anything. This will probably have nothing, although this section, see how it's trending slowly downwards? We may see a slow decrease in blood, blah, 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 blood oxygen desaturations there. Okay, 
Let's see if the predictions hold true. Let's just actually focus on this one right here, okay? This is the one. This is going to be the biggest desaturation of the night. Mark my words. Uh, 1253. Boom! Right on the money. Biggest one of the night. Dropping down to 87, according to whatever that is. Okay, we also had this section up here. I believe I did say 11.20 to, I think I said like 11.45-ish. Spot on. This one I was spot on. Uh, I remember in this area I said some low level, probably 1% to 2% desaturations. God damn, I'm good. I am so sorry. This is a Christian Cat channel. I shouldn't have said that. Christian Cat channel. God bless. I'm good. Yeah, I did say I would have something right in that area. And then, uh, and then we said... We did say over here, I don't remember the times, 340, that sounds good <laughs> in hindsight. But basically this is gonna line up perfectly with the chunkiness that we see start up here. So yeah, I'm pretty confident. I probably said it stopped right around there. Boom, spot on. Guys, you do not need an SPO2 monitoring device at night. It's a waste of time, waste of money, waste of resources. And in case you're wondering, this. This data is being pulled off of Sleep HQ. You can check out Sleep HQ. There's a free version called Oscar, O-S-C-A-R, found at sleepfiles.com forward slash Oscar. Or I believe there's actually a free version of Sleep HQ as well. You just go to sleephq.com. And I do either Sleep HQ or Oscar PAP analysis. Check them out on my website, axgsleepdiagnostics.com. Okay, now something that wasn't mentioned in this is severe, or not even severe, but upper airway resistance syndrome that is not being treated by CPAP. You're not even gonna see blood oxygen desaturations. If you do, like, you're gonna see like 1%. That could just be from movement though. So you're not gonna see any blood oxygen desaturations with upper airway resistance syndrome, yet your sleep is gonna be absolutely atrocious. And if you're spending all your time and efforts monitoring your SpO2 data, and it doesn't look like anything's occurring, well, you're kind of looking in the wrong place. To me, anytime you're evaluating sleep and your quality of sleep, you wanna look immediately towards your quality of breathing. And if you can also add in EEG, your brain activity, those two are like the holy grail. You can get away with, with breathing, but breathing and EEG, you can't beat that. Okay, now the one time I actually do think that these wearables are appropriate, is if you know for a fact that your breathing during sleep is perfect, everything is absolutely perfect, but you're still waking up dizzy, lightheaded, things like that with a headache, and then you check your blood oxygen levels and you'll see that it's trending very, very low, like below the 90s, and it's consistent. It's not up or down, up or down, but your breathing is perfect. There's no awakenings there. And even if you live at like a high elevation, that's another thing. If that's the case, it really you just need the SpO2 sensor for a couple nights to, to, to clarify that. That's a time you can easily just get an SpO2 monitor from your doctor, wear it for two to three nights, and confirm that your blood oxygen is in fact dipping and staying below 90, just consistently well below that. And at that point, all you need to do is add oxygen. It's, it's really that simple. You don't need to go out and buy a $150, $200 wearable to track your SpO2 readings. Now, I know this isn't really a popular opinion, but it, in my opinion, SpO2 wearables, the squeeze is not worth the juice. And also keep in mind that this would be a great time to promote these, right? I could just as easily say, wow, buy a well you ring. They're available on Amazon. Use my Amazon affiliate link, but don't save your money. No need to buy these. And now is a great time to mention the sponsor of this video, CPAPsupplies.com. Is this unbiased? I mean, yeah, it is. It's technically an ad, but it is also unbiased. Something I think is fantastic for CPAP users, if you're gonna spend money on something, is the Hurricane Dryer. It is a phenomenal piece of equipment when you're washing your equipment, you're washing your tubing, you're rinsing it out. I know some of you like to just turn on your CPAP machines and blow air through it. You can absolutely do that. There's no problem with that whatsoever if you're okay with more wear and tear on your motor. I personally like to use my CPAP machine simply for sleeping. I don't like to use it to blow leaves in my driveway. <laughs> I like to use it for its intended purpose. So if I'm spending uh, 180 bucks retail on a hurricane dryer, I'm good with that. That's, to me, that's money well spent. Now, look at this hurricane dryer. You have 30 reviews, all of them positive, 189 bucks. 
that's a deal, but we can get better. We throw this in our cart, we view our cart. Let's just do this in real time, okay? Do we have a discount code? We sure do. It is lefty20, easy. We're gonna apply that discount. How long does this take to save money? This is almost immediate. This is like instant gratification. Look at that, we just saved $37.80, $151.20 for something far more valuable than any SpO2 sensor. So you can wash, rinse, do whatever you want to your CPAP mask, your CPAP tubing, put it in the hurricane dryer for about an hour, perfectly dry for the next time you use it. I think it is a phenomenal deal. All right, guys, light me up. Let me know where I'm wrong in this. Now, if you're thoroughly impressed with this investigatory story, check out my website, AXG Sleep Diagnostics. We can do a pap therapy analysis. I can go through your data, look for uh, look for the positives, look for the negatives, come up with a plan for you to get better sleep. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Bye. Clean your stinky mask with some mask right available at Amazon. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick <coughs> thanks butter to Doug Toombs, Jason Georgiades, Patricia Espalong, Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, Mona Swaringen, Chung Tu Chen, Edward Steiner, Aaron Stevenson, Deborah Permute, and Shannon Kerr, and another slightly less thick thanks, buddy, to all the other YouTube members, Patreon supporters, and other stuff. Now, Papper people, we may have some uh, EV jerks as well as some ice holes among us. This is my other channel. It is called Lanky's Cat Channel. <laughs> we pretty much do a bunch of stuff about EVs, electric vehicles, because I just got one and I'm kind of uh, finding a lot of this stuff interesting. So if you want to check it out, this is my video I just uploaded the other day and it was doing, it was performing eh, okay, then it was like, no, and now it's like, I think we can call this 100% viral for this channel. It has about uh, like a thousand subscribers. So for this channel, it, it's pretty good. It, this is viral for me. So check it out, Lanky's Cat Channel. I'll leave a link to this video in the description box. Mostly it's just having fun. So if you like having fun on YouTube, you're already on YouTube, so you might as well come and have some fun. Check out Lanky's Cat Channel. Bye-bye. Uh,